Hey everyone, welcome back to the Half Soybean channel. My name is Sharon and as you can see, today we've got a new background and my sewing space has finally come together and I'm so excited to share my journey with you guys. It's been a couple of weeks in the making and it's taken me a little bit longer than anticipated. One thing to note in the video is that time is not linear, but I hope it still makes sense. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of House Soybean, which has been the series where I've been making over different parts of my home and also doing a little bit of DIY. DIY projects here and there. Before we get started, I want to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Space Taylor and Veilish Window Films, who kindly helped me make this space possible. And without further ado, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Today we are tackling this room that's giving me anxiety because it's just, it's just a mess. I've honestly just been avoiding coming into this room for like a straight month because. It just gives me anxiety. Like, I just don't know what to do with it. I feel very limited in what furniture I can get for this space right now because I am in lockdown for God knows how long. I've got a lot of pieces of furniture that individually do not bring me a lot of joy. Let me do like a 360 of this room. So we've got the fabric stuff over here and then my old kind of pegboard and shelf thing. And then this corner, empty. I put a mirror there because it looked very weird. I just hate this dark column. Like, why is it made out of tile? I don't know. And then I've just got some like filming equipment stuff in this corner right now. As you can see, there's a lot to be done. Very bland and not super organized either. place I don't think I ever revealed my fabric shelf mainly because I was quite embarrassed of how disorganized it looked and of course I would prefer like a closed shelf you know that kind of hides everything from view but when things are tidied away I can't visualize how things are gonna work and then like when I just have everything out on display it just helps me feel more inspired so even though I would much prefer things to be you know hidden from view but i just can't do anything about that at this moment how embarrassing honestly there's just oh, all of that needs to go back into there when i first moved in i was feeling really lazy about dealing with the shell so kevin's actually the one who folded a lot of the fabric in yeah i don't think he knew what fabric types went where. So I kind of have to reorganize this anyway. I think I'm just gonna pull all my fabrics out. There's a lot of scrap pieces. There's a lot of big pieces. A lot of my fabrics are bought secondhand actually, like from D-Stash groups. Some of them are bought new, but I do try to get my fabrics from D-Stash groups wherever possible. I had to clear everything first because I needed to tackle that fabric shelf first and foremost. Of course, I had to pull everything out so I could reorganize my fabric by type and also fold everything a little bit neater. I swear I find the prettiest fabric secondhand. I'm kind of on a pause from buying fabrics because I want to use what I have. I have collected a lot of fabrics as you can see. But I just want to show you this like beautiful quilted floral fabric. I think this one's vintage. Got this like flower shaped sucker or like cotton fabric. I love this fabric so much. Even this one. This one was second hand. It's just kind of like outdoor furnishing fabric but it's also so beautiful. I love these. This is vintage and then this is vintage and I haven't decided a use for this one but I think this one's this one was second hand as well. Even though it's kind of bigger bolts up there I got second hand which is really awesome. I got them for, for a really good price from memory. I hardly ever sew with the florals in my videos, but I've actually accumulated quite the collection of floral fabric, so I guess it's time to make some dresses soon. Some were organized by prints, but mostly by type of fabric. My wovens are all at the top, and then my synthetics and stretchy materials are in the bottom shelves. Pegboard I grabbed from Bunnings. It was white and I painted it 
purple and then this Calax shelf um oh my god another box is like in the other room it just has various like craft supplies shoved in there these boxes truly do not bring me any joy but what can i do <sighs> you know the calyx isn't the main issue i feel like the main issue are these children's room drona boxes so i was thinking this needs a little bit of a spruce so i want to use like all eight panels and make a mural i don't even know what i want to paint yet but i think that might make me hate it a little bit less if there's like some kind of artwork on it these drona boxes if anyone's owned them they are very flimsy they're not the strongest sturdiest kind of box the inside of it is literally cardboard so i'm a little bit concerned that the paint might make that soggy and lose its shape so i don't want to mix any textile medium and i don't want this box to crumble apart i firstly did a pencil outline and i was just going for a colorful and abstract mural where i could experiment with lines and shapes the key here is that the design needs to kind of cross over across all the boxes so large shapes is the way to go i also used regular acrylic paint nothing special and it didn't end up affecting the integrity of the boxes at all i didn't record the whole process but it did take me like four to five afternoons even though i expected myself to finish in half that time however i do definitely recommend this diy it was an easy way to jazz up the plain calyx and use it like a statement artwork in the room the final reveal will come later I promise you this room actually has absolutely zero privacy and you could just be like Sharon why don't you just close the blinds <laughs> but then I won't be getting the wonderful natural lighting which is a huge plus of this room and so I need to figure out a way to kind of deal with this privacy issue on this whole window wall to be honest the neighbors probably don't care about me and they're not watching me at all but I still feel really really vulnerable and I would just really like a way to just cover these windows without having to close the blinds because that makes me feel like very stuffy and I don't like having the blinds closed. To combat my privacy issue, my family actually helped me put up these reed screens when I first moved in and they definitely helped a lot make it feel more private but I wanted something a bit more since they don't reach all the way up to the ceiling. One week later. Okay, I am really excited right now. I have a package all the way from Korea. Look, it says Sharon Choi half soybean. <laughs> I don't know why that was funny. These are my window films. I think I mentioned that I feel very um, exposed in this room because I've got giant windows, I'm close to street level, and it's also a very densely populated apartment area. So I have buildings right across from me who I feel are peeping into my windows all the time. So thank you so much to today's sponsor space taylor and also valish window films so space taylor they do the printed designs and the valish window films are the actual products that goes on the windows from my understanding and these window films are really cool because they are 100 percent fabric they just seem really really high quality so i'm just gonna open this pack I'm, I'm just gonna open this package sorry just jumping in before we open the package i actually measured my windows before and sent them the measurements and they were kindly able to send me the amount i needed and you can also send them a photo of your space and they can help you out with the simulation i've been dying to open this it arrived yesterday but it's actually really big it's like up to my chest oh god Ugh. Okay, this isn't working. I think I could reuse these containers to put my um, some of my bigger paper patterns in because it's really, really good quality. So, okay, I think this is the white one. Oh my god, this is like really nice already. Wow, okay, I'm gonna open the next one. Packaging is so pretty. I think this is like the same window film that um, the actual stuff is made of. And then 
This is the printed design that I got. There's a little user guide in there. Wow, this is so pretty. I'm so excited to attach it to my windows. Holy crap. Wow, thank you. So this is the regular white one and you guys can buy this color or I think they have gray as well. This fabric material, it's so nice to touch. I think this fabric texture will really help the room feel super cozy and nice. It just feels like wallpaper to me. Apparently these can reduce up to 25 to 30% of UV rays and I think that's so awesome because we want to protect our skin from those UV rays even if we're wearing SPF every single day. They sent it to me in one massive roll but look at the design. I'm not sure if I can if it comes up on camera very well but it is extremely pretty. I've got my user guide here. So from my understanding, these window films by Valish, they are absolutely perfect if you are in the business of printing. So standard window films, they're usually made of plastic, PVC, and once you get it in that form, there's not much you can do with it. But with these Valish ones, they have a fabric surface and that makes them compatible with a wide range of inkjet printers. And they take a wide range of inks as well, including eco solvent inks, latex inks, and also UV cure inks. So if you're a printing company and you're like, I want to print really cool designs onto some window films, I think the Valish ones will be really perfect. They're such good quality and they are absolutely beautiful. I was really lucky because Space Taylor and Valish sent me a printed version, but unfortunately I don't think that's available for general public purchase just yet. But you are still able to get the plain ones and I have the white one to show you as well. Here are my four panel windows. They are really big and what I want to do is have like the printed version on like half of it and then the white ones along the bottom. And yes, I do have to cover the whole window because you can kind of see there's like a building that can peep right into this room. I just grabbed some painter's tape and I marked where I wanted the seam to be, but then I got really lazy and only marked this one window, but you get the idea. I think you're just meant to like peel a little bit and then like roll it down with the squeegee. All you do is just remove the backing and you stick it on. It's really easy to do by yourself. I did the whole four windows by myself and it's not overly sticky. So even if you make a mistake, you can easily take it off and reapply it. Because of this, I don't think they will leave any sticky residue if you have to remove them even after some time. Then with an X-Acto knife, I cut through the excess scythe, which came off really clean and satisfyingly. Okay, so I've done like three panels of the, uh, of the printed wallpaper and it's actually like getting easier each time I do it. So the first one, I was like struggling a little bit, figuring out how to exactly use this product. Oh, I'm really washed out. The sun just came in. Okay, there we go. Um, but then by the third panel, I'm feeling pretty good. Like it's not too hard. Okay, so I just finished doing all the floral ones. I actually um stuck up the side pieces on the wall there. Maybe I can do something with the leftovers. Anyway, now I'm gonna move on to the bottom uh, section but I feel like the camera doesn't do it justice it's really really pretty so I am losing sunlight a little bit so I am rushing because I really want to get this done but also I'm getting my COVID vaccine tonight and I heard that your arm might be a little bit sore afterwards and I don't really want to um, not be able to do this if my arm is that sore so I'm kind of like really hoping I can get this done cut out all my pieces of the white um, sheets and I'm just gonna apply it onto these lower half of the windows. So as you can see even if it sticks to itself you can easily just straighten it out again and it's really just that easy. Here we are. Finished the white section. I've just turned the lights 
off um, just so you can see it a little bit better but I'm pretty happy with it but what I do want to try is paint like a line where the seam is just so that like it feels a little bit more blended and cohesive. I'm thinking if you get the plain ones and you want to paint them it'll definitely be possible and I think it can look really pretty. I just did this simple line because I already have the printed ones but if I just had the plain ones I think I would have definitely considered painting on these. It's really easy to paint on because it's just a fabric and I just love this window film. The sun has set which means we can see the um, the printing a lot clearer and I'm so happy with it. Let me go outside and show you what it looks like from the outside since the sun has set now. Let's just see. I reckon it looks really, really private. Like the fly screens are closed right now and you can still kind of see like what's going on inside if you really try. Keep in mind that I also have this privacy screen on my balcony so it's kind of like double the protection. And if I open up the fly screens, let's see what it looks like. Um, we just walk backwards. It's so pretty. I love the squiggle detail from the outside as well. It looks really, really nice. Um, so I'm so happy with how this window turned out, but I'm gonna go get my vaccine now. That is just a little bit random to be included in this sewing room makeover, but that is life in 2021. I'm waiting in the vaccination waiting room. I can't believe I'm living through this. It feels like a movie. It's just so strange. I am like... Vaccine! He got his too. Got our sticker. I don't know if you can see it. Alright. I'm gonna go get some Maccas now. That's, that's McDonald's. But we call McDonald's in Australia. Nine o'clock it was a work day today and I really wanted to get some stuff done during my lunch break and stuff but I didn't so now I'm gonna I decided to do a painting and the inspiration for today's painting is from the movie that I watched on the weekend which was the Pixar movie from last year called a soul it was such a nice movie i really enjoyed it a lot anyway the jazz guy the jazz guy in his apartment he had this uh kind of retro looking painting in like one corner right next to his front door and i was like that's a pretty cute painting i wouldn't mind having that painting in my sewing room so that's what we're gonna try and recreate today during my editing i just did some quick googling and found out this is actually a famous and existing painting in real life so there we go learn something new every day so just draw a line Okay, now I want to draw some kind of shape, like a bit of a bean shape maybe. Sorry, you can't see the pencil very well on camera, but the idea is to draw some kind of organic shape and have a line down the middle. Have you heard about revenge bedtime procrastination? Apparently it's when like you feel like you don't have as much fun during the day at your job or whatever so you end up like staying up super late just to do stuff that isn't necessarily super fun but you just feel like you have to stay up. I stay up just to watch stuff. Oh my god. I stay up just to watch stuff until like 2 a.m. even though I'm super tired because I just feel like I have to I have to do something fun 
And today I said, no, I'm not just gonna lay in bed and watch stuff, I'll paint something. There we go. I'm not sure why all the nails in this house are obnoxiously high. I had the same problem with my painting in the living room. Um, I listened to some advice in the comments and just put a string thing there and I think it looks cute. It's my little bean painting. Let me just take you back to this pegboard situation and we're going to do a massive flashback to last year, August of 2020, when I actually originally got this set up. My friend Addie and I went on a trip to Bunnings. This, this one, that's $59 and this one's $30 and it's a bit smaller. But I can't tell, is it? What's this? So I was tossing between the two sizes, but propping them up was really obvious that I did not have room for the larger one. There's also a range of pegboard hooks and hangers. I mean, there's just so many and they're all pretty affordable. I think at the time I was initially looking to get the Ikea pegboard range, but I felt like everything would add up and just be like super pricey. Oh, I wanna go look at the plants. We really appreciate everyone's pain. From the Maccas as well. Probably. Yeah, it's <laughs> double rainbow. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. It's like a full arch. I love that. Look how good that looks. So cute. So now we are going to drive to the, oh there's a bug, to the local shopping center to see if we can find some like wire basket attachments, some pen cup holder thingies and also um, 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 maybe some paint and some pegs and bulldog clips. The avocado basket is from Miniso, the little buckets are from Kmart, and the clips were from Typo, and I'm still using them a year later. I also got a sample pot of paint from Bunnings and a cheap roller, and did two coats on the pegboard. And I'm sure you recognize my old setup. I did lots of videos in this little corner. It was just like this and I worked in literally this tiny one nook of my bedroom to do all my sewing. And I was working, sewing, doing videos, sleeping all in the one tiny bedroom. Now, because I didn't like that gray tile column thing, I thought that I could cover most of it up with my pegboard. So I put some sturdy rope through the pegboard holes and hung it up on that existing hook, which was already here when I got here. I pulled out all my hooks so that I could rearrange them vertically. And my thread rack is from eBay. I think it was about $20 or something at the time. I just use craft paper for my pattern drafting. I feel like it's the most affordable that way. I wish I had some more of these hangers for the big overlock thread because I definitely have more than four spools and I want to hang them up but I'll just have to get them later. Some more bobbins because I literally never have enough. I don't know why. I also brought in my dressing table because I needed an extra table across that wall. With my empty corner wall I knew that I wanted to do some sort of art paintings maybe but it had to be renter friendly and minimal damage so i was scrolling on pinterest and i found some inspiration in an embroidery hoop wall so i bought myself some embroidery hoops and placemats even and i'm not an expert punch needler or even embroidery person but i just kind of did whatever i also chucked in some fabrics that i've 
used in my past videos and I think it turned out really nice. Honestly, props to those embroidery artists out there because my impatient ass could not deal with the slow process of it all. I really had no plan going into this feature wall so I kind of just did whatever I wanted. I tried to do the easiest designs. I googled like beginner friendly punch needling or something and I just did whatever looked simple because I didn't want to spend too much time on this but I ended up spending like quite a long time on it in any event. <laughs> I also tried doing some French knots for this strawberry, which, let's be real, took way too much time. Okay, I wanna tell you how to thread this punch needle. So there should be a threader like this, and you just stick it in from this end of the punch needle. Put it in there until it comes out the other end. We put our thread through the hole, and then you wanna Pull it so it comes out the other side and then take it out of the threader. We have this hole here, right? So you stick the threader in from the outside and then you loop your thread into that threader again and then you pull it out of that hole. And there's your needle. I've got this um, round placemat and it's kind of this hessian, hessian, I'm not sure. I want to try and use this to embroider something on as well. I'm not sure if it'll work very well, but I have it, so I'm going to try and use it. Don't love this design, but the placemat worked pretty well. You may recognize this fabric from my puff sleeve video. It is one of the sleeves that I deemed not puffy enough, it wasn't big enough, and it's just been living in my scrap bag until now, but now it gets a new life on the embroidery hoop. And this vintage tulip check fabric, which I used for my reversible teddy jacket video. I think this fabric is just so pretty, and so I decided to put it in a hoop as well. Then I also used the strawberry tool that was left over from the video where I tried to make the famous Lyrica Matoshi strawberry dress. And some punch needle designs I scrapped all together because I didn't really end up liking them so you won't see them on my wall. So the odd thing is one side of my wall has outdoor paint on it which I just feel like is just you know random landlord interior finishing decisions. Because that paint has like this waterproof surface I just used command strips on that because I'm pretty sure it's not going to peel off and for the other side which is just regular drywall I ended up using small amounts of blue tack. Once I had most of my room set up, I wanted to use the ironing board as kind of an art piece because the wall was quite bare above the calyx, but the original cover was just too bland for my liking. I decided to quickly whip one up out of a more fun fabric. So what you wanna do is just trace your ironing board, but feel free to just do half as we can fold the fabric and cut on the fold so it's nice and symmetrical. I should have left way more seam allowance, so I reckon give ample space, maybe two inches even. I had this bias tape lying around, so I decided to use that as a elastic band channel for the cover. Then you want to apply the tape firstly to the right side of your fabric. Then you should be able to fold everything down from the other side and sew that down too. But leave a small gap so you can feed in the elastic later. Let me know if you want a more detailed tutorial on this iron cover. I didn't make it super detailed as it was kind of a last minute project. Then I tried using a loop turner to get the elastic inside, but I ended up just using a safety pin. Anyway, just close up that open edge and we're all done. I realized my cover ended up being the tiniest bit too small, but it still fits well enough. Also, this is what the windows look like during the day. You can't see inside at all, which is Amazing, perfect. Okay, and so that kind of wraps everything up. Let's remind ourselves what the place looked like before. And here is the final look at my sewing room. I just really love how this corner turned out.
I'll be playing with me, time I got you, you do. Girl, you hold me on so softly, and you feed me, and you watch me, you do. Babe, you keep me in your pocket with your keys and with your wallet, you do. The window coverings make the room so cozy and it brings in that warm light and it just looks so pretty. I also feel really happy about retiring my pegboard from the top of my calyx shelf and I'm so glad I decided to paint the drona boxes to form this awesome mural. It really makes the room pop. I hope you enjoyed this sewing room makeover. Let me know what you think. I hope you had fun watching this. I certainly had fun doing up this space. And as always, there are more videos coming, so please stay tuned if you're interested. And other than that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye!